Hi, this is Chef Before Shot. Today I'm going to show you how to make orange creamsicle cheesecake. And this is a pretty easy cheesecake to make. I'm going to be uh, as detailed as possible, so the video may be quite lengthy, but it's worth it. We're going to first start off with making a uh, graham cracker crust, and then we're going to make the vanilla layer and then the orange creamsicle layer. And then I'm going to show you how to remove it all from the pan. So you'll be able to find the list ingredients you need in the bottom of the video as usual. So here in um, the bowl I have some um, graham cracker crumbs. And I'm going to um, add melted butter to the graham cracker crumbs. And I'm just going to use my hands to mix it together. And if it um, feels still too dry, just add more melted butter. So after you mix everything together thoroughly, I have um, a nine inch spring form pan. You can, um, butter this. Well, you, you will need to butter this uh, spring form pan, but I'm using professional pan grease. Just slightly coat the bottom and the size of the uh, spring form pan. So I'm going to take uh, half of this uh, graham cracker crust mixture and I'm going to put it into the pan. I like my graham cracker crust to be very thick on the cheesecake, so it's totally up to you how thick and thin you want it. But I'm going to just uh, first smooth it around. And this is enough to make two graham cracker crusts for a 9 inch. So. After pouring this into your spring pump pan, you just need to um, use your fingers just to press it all together. If you go to um, press this into the bottom of the pan, you start feeling a lot of butter in your hands. You have way too much uh, butter in your graham cracker crust, and you can just fix it by putting everything in back into the bowl and adding more graham cracker crumbs and remix it. So now this is um, set in the bottom of my spring form pan and this is going to go into my preheated 350 degree oven and I'm going to bake this for exactly 8 minutes. Here in my um, mixing bowl I'm going to add cream cheese. And then to this, I'm going to add um, sugar. And this is fitted with my paddle attachment. And I'm going to cream the two together. Start off on low speed. And then once the cheese and the sugar begin to blend together, I'm going to adjust the speed to medium. And this uh, cream cheese is at room temperature. Okay, you're going to scrape down the sides of the bowl. So I'm going to scrape everything off the paddle. Scrape down the sides and the bottom of your bowl. And scraping is really important in baking. And it's to ensure that everything is incorporating correctly. Because when you don't mix all the sugars and the butters together in the creamy method, you'll end up with a terrible outcome. To this, I'm going to add uh, eggs one at a time. 
So after adding it, cream it together. Give everything a scrape again. And once you have the eggs, everything becomes a lot easier to scrape together. But if you still feel a lot of sugar grains in your batter, you need to definitely let it mix for a while. Okay, to this I'm going to add some uh, vanilla extract. Of course, you're going to give this a mix. Now, you're going to add sour cream. Okay, give everything a mix. Here is the uh, graham cracker crust, and I took it out after it baked, and this is going to go into the graham cracker crust, but give everything a one final mix, just to make sure you have everything well combined. And uh, with cheesecakes, you do have to bake them um, at a rather low temperature. My oven right now is at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And once I put the cake in the oven, I am going to drop the temperature to 325. And from that point, it just really depends on your oven because I've learn that some recipes may say bake for an hour and a half and it may take three hours so it just really depends on your oven so I'm going to just shake the batter around into the pan just to make sure everything is distributed I'm not even going to smooth this with the spatula just lightly tap it not too hard because you don't want to break apart the graham cracker crust Lightly tapping it will allow all the air bubbles to form and allow the air to come out. A couple of things before we bake it. I'm just going to take a couple pieces of foil. And just fold it together, making a thing along the edge here. And the reason why I'm doing this is because the cake has to be baked in a water bath. So just creating this seam here on the foil will just ensure that no water gets into the bottom of your spring pan. So I just fold it a few times. Open it back up. Place your cheesecake onto the foil. just kind of gather it. Be sure that your foil does not touch your cheesecake batter because it will cut it. Um, especially when you go in the oven to check it and your cake is almost set. The worst thing you 
expect it to happen is your foil goes and cut into the cake. So now I'm going to uh, bake this in a water bath. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to do the water bath. So what you're seeing here is the inside of my oven. And I have a half sheet pan. Place the cake on the half sheet pan. And the pan is going to be filled with water. Not too much water, but just allow it to come up half wet. The water bath is important because it helps bake the cheesecake in a gentle manner. And also, it will help keep the cake from cracking. Opening your oven too much will make your cheesecake crack too. And this is warm water that I'm adding to the pan. So this is going to bake for approximately an hour and a half up to three hours. It just really depends on your oven but don't check it until an hour and a half. So we'll be back after an hour and a half. And the oven's at 350. Once you close the door, drop the temperature down to 325 degrees Fahrenheit. And this is, uh, if you have an oven with a fan, if you have the ability to, just disable your fan. Um, that way, it won't blow the batter around. And I just took the pan out the oven, literally just took it out. And it's been like an hour and 45 minutes. And I'm shaking the pan, and as you see, it's not even really jiggling. It's slightly jiggly but the center of it is set. So now I'm going to let this cool completely. I'm going to chill this in the fridge for um, I'm going to probably just chill this overnight. Um, you can do it in the freezer for a few hours and move on to the next step which I'll show you. But I'm going to let it cool completely and then I'll show you the next step. Okay this is the cheesecake. Um, I left the aluminum foil on the pan um, because we're going to be pouring in a, um, the cream sickle layer. Uh, I went ahead and just stuck this in the freezer because um, with this cheesecake you want it to be quite firm so when you pour the liquid on top it doesn't you know, go through the entire cheesecake or make the cheesecake soggy. So this cheesecake is completely frozen, left with the foil paper on. Here I have uh, some orange flavored gelatin in the bowl. And I have some uh, boiling water here. Pour the boiling water over the gelatin. And I'm going to mix all the water, just make sure that the gelatin is dissolved in the water. And um, this water is not, it's not piping hot because I allow it to cool off a little bit, but it is still pretty hot. But I can stick my finger in it, so it's hot. We'll and um, even though I am going to list the measurements in the bottom of the screen, you know, I do want to explain one thing. Um, the recipe called for. Uh, eight ounces of uh, Cool Whip, and I don't like using Cool Whip too much, so I try to stay away from it whenever I can. And um, I've made my own uh, whipped cream, and this is uh, eight ounces of whipped cream, and this is uh, eight ounces weight-wise. So um, if you have a scale, you can measure out eight ounces of the cream after it's been whipped. And um, you don't want the water to be super hot. So that's why I allow it to cool off before I mixed it. And now this needs to be um, 
this into the gelatin mixture. So it's well combined. If your water is too hot, the final outcome of your cheesecake for this layer it won't be too pleasant. But you see it's still pretty, uh, let's see if I can adjust the light here. So you see the texture of it is pretty smooth, but it has a silky look to it. And this is going to be poured over the cheesecake. And then this is going to go back into the freezer for a couple more hours just until the cake is firm. Everything's set properly. And I know the color is a bit off. So this is why we leave the foil paper on um, to keep it from seeping out the bottom if it happens to do so. So back to the freezer for another two to three hours and then I'm going to take it out and let it sit at room temperature for about 15 minutes or so just to make sure the cake is completely thawed and I can slice into it. I'm going to take a knife and I'm just going to go around the size of the cake. And sometimes the top has a tendency to kind of crack a little bit, but that's okay because it's just the creamsicle layer. And this, life, this knife, I did rinse it with very hot water. Okay, so now I'm going to open it. And as I said, the top, sometimes it cracks a little bit. This is the creamsicle, creamsicle layer. So I just uh, wanted to mold this. So now I'm going to um, put this back in the fridge and let this sit for about another 30 minutes and then we'll slice it. So here I have a knife that I um, dipped in uh, boiling water and just dry it off and I'm going to uh, cut the cake. It's important to dip it in the boiling water after each time you uh, slice your cheesecake. So after slicing it down, I'm going to remove it from the pan. And that's it. I hope you guys try this recipe and enjoy it. Please do not forget to rate, comment, and subscribe for new videos every Wednesday and Saturday. Thank you for watching.